Okay, so it's called It's Overwhelming. It's overwhelming. I'm sick to my stomach at how parallel our worlds are becoming. I've fought and fight to distance our cosmic connections, yet you keep pursuing. I resist all reconciling with reckoning you are en route to wreck me, but you reckon I'm just resisting what's meant to be. I'm usually quite quick at diverting my attention to things more tangible. We spoke about tangible earlier, didn't we? <laughs> Though I don't grasp you and neither you want to me, I can't seem to leave this tightly knotted, unspoken unity. I'm enraged inside, inside my mind, inside these thighs, I can't deny. I'm softened under flashbacks of winter nights and summer vibes. Mm. Why do I indulge in scented moments with you when I'm at home, when alone, when no one's around, just my thoughts, my vulva and memories in my phone? Mm. You don't get to stimulate me from so far, most times unknown to you, I'm desiring your silk soft touch, which makes the hairs on my neck stand up. At work, I'll sit and flex my spine in a slow motion twine, just wondering whether, just wondering through my mind about the maybe of a next rhyme meets low wine in another lifetime. Mm. But I know it's all thoughts and visions, memories of being christened, caressing your arms to back to neck, us close, chest to chest. So I sit solemnly with my psyche and chant, you're toxic, you're toxic, toxic, toxically intricate, intimate, toxic intimacy is what you bring to me. Once again, I'm conflicted, all muscles tense, raised and not resistant, off into a dream I go. Even when I try so hard to let go of your part of my sexual flow. And our memoirs taught me, denounce your thoughts of me. I demand you set me free. So I get to be the most wholesome me for somebody who deserves all my glory and glorious is she, me. All of what you want me to be. I'm your scarf, wrap my most tender parts around your neck and let each flex soothe your tension. I am your glass, sip from me the sweetest herbal tea you will ever need, so luxurious and overflowing with flavors. I am your jeans, place your legs firmly into place and let the night stars clasp your zip around our waist. Come on. Finally, I am your home. Find me, come into me, and find comfort in the coziest of rooms I have naturally been preparing for you for a lifetime. I need to release these memories of moments magnifying each minute I'm without you. My sexual lifeline, the throned rose of mine, of which I prick my finger each time. You are my only unsolicited craving. I continually pursue this mission knowing you're no good for me. Thank you. Even the black of the northern line feels like a crime. Until someone says Boston, I'm convinced that I'm fine. I used to say I loved Hampstead, but I just loved you. The whole of London felt like ours, but it was yours and hers too. Mm. I've got to move past this. I need to move on. The tube map's a constellation of love that is gone. This grief is not healthy. Of that, I am sure. You weren't mine to lose, and I deserve more. Because I lost the battle, but we all lost the war. It's a pyrrhic victory for you, if we're keeping score. She loved you first, and I loved you more. It's hard not to ask, what was all of this for? So this one's a bit longer, because I'm feeling brave. Um, okay, I think you'll so sort of follow the pattern of this, um, this poetry. Yes, we had a sisterhood. Yes, we made a pact, but that went to hell the day you took him back. I didn't break first. I'm afraid that's on him. And if you're mad from that exchange, how good's your counselling been? Did you read what I sent? I wished you both the very best. And then I cut the conversation, so will you give it a rest? I tried not to get involved. I'd been staying out the way. But if he reaches out to me, I'll want to check he's OK. I pray you make it through this. I honestly do. I've dropped my weapons, but I can't change your view. When you're shouting at me, whore, tell me what is your intent. I think you're scared to lose him, so I'm where you vent. For the record, I'm afraid I didn't drag him to bed. My aggressive pursuit was one question instead. I said, do you want to fuck? He blinked, then said yes. He ran back for 12 months. He wasn't under duress. He chose to cheat, so the blame's not on mine. If he doesn't love you, then leave him. I did and survived. But maybe that's the problem, that I had more spine. I gave everything up to leave him behind. So call me a liar, but you know I speak truth. I've got evidence if needed, caseloads of proof. We aren't all that different, I'm afraid, you and I. 
Both married when we fell for a different guy, both stupid to fall for his pretty lie. I'm sorry that we stopped seeing eye to eye. Wow. Okay. Hi, I'm Seneca. My, my poem isn't about love. It's, right. it's about depression. And it's my first time presenting. Yeah. someone asks me how I am, I'll force a smile and reply I am fine. It's just a lot easier. This world has come to a point where someone asks how are you? No one wants to hear what you're really going through. How are you? Is just a close-ended question to be answered with full discretion and no further expression. Mm -hmm. Like it's a crime to talk about how we really feel because dealing with our feelings is not viewed as ideal. No one wants to hear anything other than I am fine, I am good, I am great. No one wants to hear you narrate your sob story or your fate. Hence, replying I am fine is a lot easier than having to feel like I have wasted someone's time. I am fine is a lot easier than admitting that actually I'm not okay and my mental health is in decline. I am fine is a lot easier than explaining the shit I have in my mind. I am fine is a lot easier than finding words for this darkness, this misery, this emptiness I feel but cannot define. I feel like I'm just trapped in my own head. It's difficult to do simple tasks. It is not lazy. It's a cycle of loss of interest and energy and there is nothing I can do but feel like I'm going crazy. It is not easy to feel nothing but sad. It's difficult to even get out of bed. Sometimes I just wish I was dead. Because that is a lot easier than my futile attempts to see past this darkness. It's easier than fa failing to escape this hell again and again regardless. It's easier to be dead for once and for all than have life kill me innumerable times countless. How many times am I going to fall and crawl until trying to pick myself up and stand tall? My mind will stop reminding me of how small, insignificant, and unworthy I am. All I want to do is crawl in my bed and disappear into nothingness. Just like my happiness. I wish it could also apply to my mental illness, but it never goes away. Despite of how much I beg and pray that, hey, at least it's committed, it won't ever leave me alone. This depression is all I have ever known and it sucks to the fucking bone. It breaks me completely. I have to push everyone away and not be allowed to feel lonely because if I do, then I am not worthy. I am not worthy enough or good enough for anyone or anything. It feels like I'm in debt trying to repay everything, trying to repay this loan with battles of my own mind, body, and soul. I am tired. I am tired of my mind constantly putting me in a state of anxiety like I'm, like I'm a slave to my own thoughts and worry. My mind won't ever stop criticizing everything about me like I am its enemy. I just want to feel free. I don't want to be me. Because I feel like a clown. Wait, no, at least clowns are interesting enough. At least they make people laugh. I can't make people laugh. Gosh, I can't even make myself smile. Also, everyone likes clowns. I don't even like myself to even expect someone else to love me. Why can't I ever be happy? It's not like I haven't tried tirelessly. I genuinely tried my best, but every single time I try to be happy, it feels like every ounce of approaching joy just sinks and drowns slowly in this huge ocean of sadness I have within me. Every single time I try to be at peace with myself and breathe a little, my subconscious habits of self-loathing and self-sabotage drag me down gladly like it is my favorite hobby. Guilt trapping myself that maybe, just maybe, if I was enough. Severely lacking self-love, also, every single time I try to hold on to some hope, sadly, I lose my willingness to cope to this immense inky cloud of despondency that persists for over an eternity, clouding my judgment and demolishing me into misery. Will this air of melancholy ever drift away? I do not think so. Anyway, how am I? I am fine. How are you? Yeah. I see teardrops in the sky and sometimes sunny smiles. My grandfather had this gift of stopping the rain on the faces of those hiding from the sun. So let's light this candle in his memory. He may be gone, long gone, traveled to another place, but he is the voice beneath my troublesome thoughts. The one that tells me who I am before I even know. He is the one writing this, not me. I don't write poetry, I just listen. He whispers in my ears, you are all you need.
this next one's for my partner. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can try to memorize it, but my legs are shaking a little bit, so, so maybe I will read this one. So I'll try it. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Alright. Falling in love, I learned that my hands carry more words than my mouth does. So, when I hold yours, a lot is said, but nothing is spoken. I love how our fingers have grown familiar of the places we were once scared of. As I... As I... Um, I'll have to say it. Sorry, I have to. That's fine. Oh, yeah. Sorry, one more time. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Can you for, start again for us? Just sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, sure. We're just, we're just involved. <laughs> <laughs> Falling in love, I learned that my hands carry more words than my mouth does. So when I hold yours, a lot is said, but nothing is spoken. I like how our fingers have grown familiar of the places we were once scared of. As I play my fingers on your neck, piano. That's why your nickname is Symphony. Oh. Oh, okay. As I write your ear, somehow thinking it will increase the volume, you tell me to whisper, so maybe it won't. Our hands whisper all night long until our mouths open to unshared secrets at dawn. <laughs> wasn't a part of the plan mm. and did I really say yes to this plan committing to a journey playing a role of some kind of sacrificial lamb take the trauma of your family and transmute that energy to love mm. my heart is a blessing and at times it feels like a curse because I don't use it sparingly so it makes it hard to forget the splatter of despicable matters that left scars I made beautiful. By weeding the dis-ease from traumas I've been healing, transmuting every feeling and scraps that were left out to feed me. And I ate. I ate from broken plates and fed them love and spiritual healing. Is each one teach one, so I spread love even in the face of adversity because I was chosen. Chosen to fit battles where there's falling ceilings, so I don't need sympathy even when there are clans formed against me, those lacking empathy. I've got the most high protecting me. Those battles don't even belong to me. And my poetry involves lots of feelings. At times I can't find the right words to express what I'm feeling, but I am, I'm, I'm feeling what I'm feeling. And those are the feelings that brought me to a divine place of healing. And everything I've challenged is within reason, not your reasoning because it's my season. And only God and I need to know the purpose. Your reasoning cannot withstand what God has planned. I'll get things wrong, but I'll grow consistently. So you can run with one side of the story, all the illusions you did not hear from me. There's more behind every door, some see furtively. I'm not running from challenges that show up spontaneously. I'll face it head on, it's God's plan. I'm fully equipped before the mountains even appear before me. My vision showed me a long time ago. It was not going to be easy. I've seen the darkness behind the light many choose to present to me. And dare I wander close to recklessness, I feel an exhaustive energy. The warning signs that remind me. I need not fear when the most high is the strongest member on my team. So there's no room to run, to run from who I'm supposed to be. God by my side and a whole load of empathy. I am the light to my path, fulfilling 
my destiny. Um, this poem I wrote when I was kind of tipsy, and then I was looking through my phone, that's someone I used to talk to, and then I realised I didn't feel anything, I was like, you ain't shit. So I wrote yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. This one is called Rose Colour Glasses. Another year without you, wiping the slate, making memories of people both old and new. I have got used to a life where I don't wake up to a junk call or morning text, receiving messages that leave me confused, frustrated, perplexed, unable to understand, read between the lines of your complex mind. I'm stranded, unsure how to proceed, sitting with feelings that exhaust me of my energy and need guidance. I'm torn in between peace versus repeating history, misery without the company, toxicity is my drug of choice, ticket to stay alive, because what is life without chaos? <laughs> Another year, Mocking the absence, the loss of who I thought I was, mirroring everything I saw, ignoring the fundamental flaws which you showed to the world. Mm. I found peace in the violence. Without you, there was nothing to clasp onto. A tiny shred of hope exists amongst the silence I have been left to contend with. Another demon to fight until one of us falls, caves in, propels the end of our story, except that it is unwritten because they always come back. I can't keep living this way, plain prisoner, bound by the shackles and chains. You had everything to gain because I thought bending over backwards, sacrificing myself mm. would be the antidote for my pain. If love was a currency, I'd be living well above my means, sitting comfortably in the delusion, romanticising the crumbs you gave me because we both know the reality deep down that the truth was never good enough. Mm. A deep impression you imprinted and left in my future. One last person I have, your name, your memory, locked into pictures. My body, my mind, protecting me from the remains of our story. A new chapter without you. Now the only love I am seeking is closer to home. Deeper than anyone can provide, the one, one that I must craft as my own. The me I am supposed to become, aspire to be. Break away, set myself free. Banish clouds of sadness, letting light back in. Destroy the darkness, undo the damage. All I had to do was take off those various coloured glasses. And suddenly, the flame went out, and I was left in the dark shadows of the trees. Twisting my fingers together, my brain shivered and dripped out, secreting a solution of sticky neurotransmitters. Keeping my cranium, <clears throat> keeping my cranium casually supported as I accepted reality, a nightingale bolted through the air, into trees, asserting with tacit its experience and tactfulness. With losses in my certainty and belief, I lied to myself that I wasn't being heckled during my challenge. Mm. Others will call it an ordeal, which it is, but I'd rather not see it that way, especially not right now at this moment. Everyone else's coldness fades away as the network of tree roots familiarizes itself with my presence, gingerly welcoming me, welcoming me now wanting me to do well. Wit is the measure of how you practice humour. Humour is a measure of how people receive humour. And jovial peace is the echelon I'm moving to. I'm as strong as the forest I can imagine. Come on now. Obstacles are not evil in nature. A guitar doesn't intentionally try to hurt your fingers. <laughs> a form of bliss reminded me how to reconcentrate, blooming tall like a mushroom. Thinking back is useful, but not peaceful. I don't see the danger in pouring my fear into acid. It works well, and I dive down, propelled like a bullet, and visit the spirit of moonlight, both welcomed and invited, my hands open wide in grateful accomplishment. I was gonna do a little one. Yeah, you got a short one. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it on. Watching the spectacle. I found it very laughable. It's called watching the spectacle. <laughs> <laughs> watching the spectacle. I found it very laughable that my eyes were watching, I'm sure, usually poison prudent people, loll about and yawn unfancifully with a drunken strangeness stupor stumbling for balance. I fogged up my binocular I fogged up my binoculars by blowing on them and polish the lenses to clarify and renew the visible frame in my mind. Mm. 
As I looked to my fellow spectators, I was taken out of the fantasy for a second and induced into a new one because operatic frequencies were bouncing off like radars and satellites. Feeling the cool metal encircle my eye sockets, I gazed through the tunnel and jumped in the picture. What point I'm trying to make. Okay, so this is the first one that I wrote today. It doesn't have a title. Um, I'm trying not to feel lately. Yasmin told me that these emotions can be both my detriment and the creation of my desired reality. There is hope inside my bones now. I grew so tired of writing the same story, one of loss and heartache, one where I couldn't understand my own name. Looked at myself in the mirror and tried to transmute pain with more pain. Mm. But I've been charging my crystals lately, looking at the sun and wishing for it to come. Every day I wake up and feel the heat and thank God for raining down on me. I clutch onto sprinkles of dust like they're stars. Um, each one died before it could rest in my arms. But I'm thankful, grateful for the way I can see how quickly clouds move under the sky. Planet so distant, I'm glad. I'm a far away fairy with magic on my hands. Yes, I created this, these words, <laughs> even though they are simple letters. They acknowledge something greater. My hands are stained with paint because every day I depict something new. Flowers, pink, purple, and blue. Mm -hmm. Grass tickling underneath and lavender deep in my skin. I'm casting spells so that my reality can bend to my will. This is my quantum leap. There is a voice that rings deep. <laughs> <laughs> this is the voice that rings deep, a bell chiming incessantly, or maybe a knock. Feel the beats pulsating beneath me. I surge with new energy, close my eyes and feel the adrenaline. Something filling me up and it won't stop. I feel insane, but I am in love. Look in my mystique mirror, <laughs> who exists that shines brighter. That this is closer than before. Exhilaration, sophistication, understanding a new sensation. I burn the glowing sprinkles of firelight. No celestial time for not generating. I say the truth gazing at all of us. We manifest our desired reality. Build the words, sink into your cells and regenerate your mind. Resurrect right now. Let the earth breathe you in and out. I am I. <laughs> It's not as um, uplifting. Uh, maybe it is, I don't know. Um, okay. It's my favourite. <laughs> it's the only it one I like. Okay. <laughs> only one. Oh, oh, the one oh, one oh. Is, is that shade? <laughs> it's always shade. It's always shade with us. 24 7. Well, we like brothers and sisters. That sounded like some shade. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know what he said? Do you want to perform your baby today? That's what he said to me about the one that I just read. And I was like, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, like I rode on the train and I was like feeling things and thinking things and I was like, I don't want to think, I want to just live in the present. Mm -hmm. So I wrote it. Just so you know, I wrote a diss about her one time. <laughs> I want to hear that. We started being friends that. Yeah. and then he wrote a diss and that's why we started being friends again. Because so. <laughs> he dissed you. Yeah, because I was like, if it's that bad that he has to pull me out of my bullshit, I then clearly I'm in the wrong. <laughs> no, I wouldn't look at it like that, but... No, you know it is. That's just what it's about though, manifest your desired reality, don't think in... Oh fam, I could start a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll talk after. We'll talk after. Okay, this one is called Youth Once More, and I'm gonna be quick. Understanding how to grow up has never been easy. They put you on a path, tell you you're growing even when the cells are still regenerating. I struggle to let go of this ego. The one who tells me to keep fighting. She is tired, but she is stubborn. I am a flower in need of watering. I must learn to trample on my own soil. Mm. There is a path where the brain keeps evolving, even past the age of 25. We have misspent youth, and we're told by now we should have learned how to make paper grow from trees. But I don't see a reality I can accept. There is no hope in an end. Did you see my id try to set itself free? Help me learn the lesson that I'd rather shout. Tell people I'm better than them because I feel proud. But the truth is when the stars are beating down on me, when I'm wrapped in a duvet of cotton, feeling like I lost them when they were always leaving, <laughs> the universe is making me stronger. Even when I was retreating into a shallow version of myself, 
the one who'd rather run away than make a mark on this world. <laughs> but it's not the earth I'm trying to please, it's my own sanity. Yeah. Learning how to write freely rather than poetically. Mm. And even when I say a dua or, catch, mm. or clutch these glittering crystals, the moon still shines down, reminding me I'm tethered to this land. There is no other place or universe I can stand. I must learn to find footing, stay constant with the ever-changing tide. Wash waves into my core so I can feel alive. Okay. Can we have a loud round of applause for MM? Yeah! times and I absolutely love this space so first of all like thank you to Tanika and Carla for giving me this opportunity um, and thank you to all the open micers like you've given me so much inspiration tonight so I'm really excited to perform um, so yeah I'm going to do a few poems for tonight um, the first one I've done before and everyone really liked it so I'm going to do it again um, it's called I can't pronounce it but I'll try um, it's called eudaimonia and it's a Greek word which means the highest state of happiness. Ooh. I am a taker. I take what life brings. I beat myself down. I give myself wings. I am hedonistic, ripping grass apart. I make enemies of friends and I call it art. I, I create pages from dust and I burn it for fun. I take pride in working hard for setting fire to the sun. Ooh. I play heads and tails for important decisions. I ignore my voicemails. I care more about what's on television. I've got responsibilities to ignore. Motivation knocking at the door. Drawing pastel princes, I'm a picky princess, selling paper cuts and music, apple cheeks in a red dress. But I am me out like a flat earth conspiracist. And you'll see I've got all the right words, like a fairy tale lyricist. <laughs> I'm messy, I'm not the loudest, and I'm not always clear, but I write poetry that could resurrect Shakespeare. Give me a heartbeat, I'd rather have a pen. I've got plenty to tell you again and again. Sit down, say a while. I think you'll leave with a cry and a smile. Give me a chance, I'm beyond something of a brick wall. When you have a voice, you have it all. Um, so my next one I wrote a few years ago actually during the lockdown uh, at home, but it's not part of the lockdown so don't worry about that. Um, this one is called And Me. I cannot think about what I'm wearing without feeling a sense of shame. Too much or too little, what's on my body means I am to blame. I cannot walk freely in the day if I wanted, let alone at night. I look around me every so often, always prepared for a fight. I make myself small so that I go unnoticed. Unknown to all, nobody can own this. So text me when you're home text and keep the volume down on your headphones. Don't interact with strangers and always pick up the phone. Mm. I know this. And if someone comes too close to me, my body reacts, goes into discomfort mode, presuming an attack. And it's always me who moves out the way for other people on the street. I've been barged onto roads and felt invisible. I subconsciously move my feet. My feet just go in and out of fashion. I'm either too thick or too thin. Still a target of the industry. It takes money and power to fit in. I'm always being given advice, like how long my hair should be, how to behave nice. If one more stranger tells me to smile, I might dice them into the ground. <laughs> How many times do I have to apologize? I'm sick of hurting someone's reputation or pride, working hard to be rewarded, noticed, or believed. My emotional and physical labor cannot be measured, only secretly buried and grieved. We're building our careers, we're building our families, doing the chores and fighting for equity. I'm picking up the slack because no one else will. See, I weren't born with privilege. I have to kill my soul, my mental serenity, even for the little things. 21st century equality, that's a myth. I'm sick of being told I am safe and equal when each day towards me, the progress is feeble. 
I may feel less anger than the women before me, but my anger still exists. And there is validity in my pride too. So if anyone has any recommendations, please let me know. As with many aspects of my life, the storm raged at me, slowly. Caressing salty droplets onto unbreakable skin, amplifying me into disappearing rays of sunlight. The clouds set up their tents. It was as if God had turned on the shower, sprinkles demise into downpour. Liquid petals raged beneath my jacket, leaving particles of puddles in every peak and trough of my body. My shopping bag turns out soggy cardboard to snack on. Nothing affects me anymore. I merely blink at the chaos. Beyond this barrier of skin and hair, I am a deep purple ocean glittering under a long-awaited sunset. My currents flow at the speed of liquid in lava lamps. Nothing affects me anymore. I bite the beads of time and chew on the droplets with ease. Everyone around me dashes to cover, but I run towards the storm clouds on my winding path home as if I had retired. Because these days I don't feel the rush. By now I have learned that my character will not guarantee me protection, longevity or prosperity. Mm. I look at you, a gritty example of how, despite all the chances given to you, you could not change. You did not deserve a life this long. But the storm that wages on me now, whether it seeks to meet me with war or peace, it will at least be mine. And though some things may change, the salty sea scent of the earth's flood will not. Nothing affects me anymore. I am calm. I am chaos. I scoop up the droplets and I chew on them with ease. Um, this is a new one that I wrote, I finished it last week, um, so I've been memorising like crazy. Um, but I basically collected every thought that I've had, or well, most thoughts that I've had over the past couple of weeks. I took the best ones and I put it into a poem. So if you're ever looking for any inspiration, if you don't know what to write, I would highly recommend this method of writing because it works really well. And you might find that your thoughts are very poetic. My mother grazes every molecule of Tupperware to siphon out the leftover oil. At the end of each day, I write down compliments I received, like coins I collected. I turn on the news. Someone died today. Someone resigned today. I turn off the news. It seems everyone wants to start a podcast these days. <laughs> <laughs> It seems everyone wants to start a podcast these days, but it doesn't matter because no one listens anyway. <laughs> <laughs> when I walk past building blocks, I admire how each room gives off a different shade of gold or blue. I want to spend the rest of my life in an old library, letting words upon words in hardbound books cover my mind. Mm. Where does the lie end and the truth begin? I would rather die for standing up for myself than live on as a coward. Come on. Bear with me. Talking in words is more powerful than tongues. The pen is mightier than the snake. Don't ever document your crimes. <laughs> 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 Sit 
Simple things in life make me happy like text messages from my best friend. Isn't it weird how social media makes earthquakes look fake and dating shows look real? Oh, no. Don't ever let colonizers upset you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay to cry, but it's also okay to not cry, because both of these things count as being brave. Mm. It takes courage to wake up each day and love yourself. Yes. 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 The problem with being a poet is that you feel every past and present pain this world has to offer. Mm. Not everyone is this fortunate yet unfortunate. Mm. Don't get disenfranchised. There is more to life. Fight back. You deserve to be here. You don't have to be beautiful. Just be good. <laughs> and you all are amazing. Mm. Clap for yourselves. Mm. Um, can we also give and pour so much love to the two lovely hosts? Yeah. Um, so, for those of you that don't know, um, my name is Karun. Um, I write on a lot of topics but yeah love is one of my favorite topics and i'm going to be showing some poems with you today. so the first poem um it kind of was born through you know like when you go on holiday with your friends and then one of them just walks into the airbnb or the hotel and yeah it was kind of born like that I am listening to Kendrick Lamar's new album. Yes. Absorbing the wordplay and flow. <laughs> In the cool. Okay. I'm listening to Kendrick Lamar's new album, Absorbing the Wordplay and Flow. In the corner of my vivid embrace, my boy walks in. I calmly asked him, what is your love life saying, bro? <laughs> he tells me, it's saying in fear of what love may look like. I came into this wild vision, dumbfound. Two parents who didn't have time for love. Mm. Time for hugs and affection. It was always, are you doing well in school? Here's some money their way of showing love, their way of translating affection. I began chasing money, working nine to fives. The only time I would witness a rare kind of love would be through R&B music videos. <laughs> of Jug Dej, Usher, Brandy. My boy takes off his shoes and says I'm well nourished. Now I need to hibernate. In the morning, if my phone rings, tell love. I'm a good kid with no morale and big slippers. Yes. Yeah. So that's the warm up poem. Oh wow, my God. that's just. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't ready. Just sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, so, yeah, sometimes I'm just like. Like, what is self-love? Mm. And I'm just like, writing out all these ideas and sometimes I just draw pictures of what I think self-love is. And then, it's only when, like it was 2020, I started to, to practice more self-love by um, going for walks, um, 
being kind to myself more in the mornings um focusing on things that i actually enjoy like watching films or um listening to podcasts so this next piece is about um self-love um trauma is a souvenir inherited healing is a vessel i am healing myself i don't want my future kids to walk into a vacuum of trauma a warfare of trauma a scorching sewage of trauma a labyrinth of pain nothing booms more than working on yourself the world is a gathered place of trauma each of us know this how easy is it to love yourself when the doors close in your face when the smoothing words of equal opportunities don't apply to you when your name does not make it on the other side of an application when your skin is seen as a parasite in a foreign shop when your english is too good it blinds them when your blackness is a light bulb in a room full of ignorance what is self-love if it's not finding joy in a room alone smashing small milestones reading james baldwin playing oh cinnamon where you gone wrong to <laughs> nina simone vinyl diving into a salmon fillet with sun blush tomatoes i've been single for a while learning to love me embracing all that i am self-love isn't comparing yourself to others mm -hmm. self-love is not being around those who tear down your spirit self-love isn't running to people who make you question your own worth Talk up. you are worthy <laughs> you are worthy you will always be worthy yes. allow yourself to exist fully be who you are and let the world adapt come on the best thing I realised was I became the best thing that could happen to me. Oh, yeah. um, for this next piece, you know sometimes when you break up with someone, but then you know that, okay, sometimes you're in a relationship with someone and the relationship is going like, it's leading to that pivotal moments leading to that inevitable outcome and then you break up with them and then it's like I knew this was gonna happen <laughs> but, but in the back of your mind you know that 99% of the time the relationship is done but in the, that 1% is like pulling you it's like yeah, it's like strong it's like whispering it's like saying maybe what if what yeah. if we could go again what if we could try this again maybe we could do something a little bit different so this is that poem this is the poem if i could turn back time yeah i meant what i said when i said this isn't going to work there's too many cracks in the ceiling we are only building taller walls and not enough bridges you were not sharing your entire wardrobe with me my skeleton scare you my mm. demons trigger you my kindness is one of those possessions you don't appreciate if we grow all together. This relationship will only expose the huge, huge cage we have built. You and me in chains filled with conflicts and confusion. We are not changing or considering a new <coughs> way of going about this. I feel like you're only in my life to teach me what love is not. Love is not. No, you have to get it up. You have to get it up. Okay. We are not changing or considering a new way of, of going about this. I feel like you are only in my life to teach me what love is not. Love is not me having to pay for every entire thing just because I am a man. Yes. Yes. <laughs> there are days. I wake up and I'm stressed, the world in my ear so loud, the cost of living so loud, Mate. love is more like 
we will figure it out together. I'm not saying splitting bills, I'm saying 80, 20, 60, 40. Teamwork makes the dream work. Why do you play the game of acting like you are busy when you are really just ignoring me? If I could turn back time, I would really appreciate if you could vocalize your needs to me. Maybe there is something I am missing in my toolbox or something I haven't quite pulled out of my toolbox. Love is more like apologizing rather than arguing, listening rather than raising a higher voice. If I could turn back time, could we sit in a room together and understand our triggers? Every time you walk into a room, you are always on your phone. Not once do you ask me if I've eaten or if I'm mentally okay. I'm not selfish for wanting the same energy back. I know things have been really difficult. This country is really difficult. One thing for sure is relationships are not linear. We both deserve more than just the bare minimum. I don't even send you good morning texts on your way to work or hug you with pure love pulsating through me. Yeah, I don't even miss you. How are we feeling? <laughs> um, how are we feeling? Feeling alright. Are you guys um, are you guys ready for the next piece? Yes. Well, it's the warning for me. I'm not sure anymore. Yeah, like oh god. 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 Are we ready? Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Cool. I'm not gonna tell you, I'm not gonna give you an intro, I'm just gonna go into it. Cool. When I'm with you, when I'm with you, when I'm with you, when I'm with you, I put my phone away. The night air in any restaurant feels like a surrendering dream. I crave your compassion. Your gentleness, mostly. You speak with such certainty. The humility in your voice, sapphire, indigo. Mm -hmm. I turn worlds on my tongue into flowering gardens. We always speak about the infinite. The depths of subjects. What we are wrestling with. The deep yearning. What makes both of us tender. The trembling secrets. When I'm with you. We always laugh about silly memes <laughs> and endless YouTube cat videos. You don't always reply within seconds because I know the heaviness life contains. Sometimes I look at my screen, buried in sincere joy, your name like a last bite of a delicious pizza, your name like a cherry forehead kiss. I want to stay on the olive velvet sofa all day with you, our eyes tilting towards sleep, delight in the stillness. The summer mornings begin with us taking walks by the river banks, sekindling through, sekindling through a settlement of roaring trees. Well, a stanza is the singing of atmospheric miniature birds, the breathtaking insufferable leaves falling. We hold hands bereft by nature's beauty. Every other day I gift you a euphoria of flowers, roses, orchards, lilies. Being in your presence warms my skin. I wonder sometimes if this is all a novel, worthy dream. Mm. And if I'm sleeping, or if I'm asleep, when I wake up, will you still be here? The Chinese believe a soulmate is someone who understands your music. Mm -hmm. I'm like deep chill meets Afro punk. <laughs> <laughs> and you resonate with that entirely. I won't be happy if my dream of white blossoms 
on a majestic sandy beach isn't with you. The sun burning in my stomach, wanting to shine, to live my life with you. There are times my anxiety reaches its tipping point. Your lips move. I shut eyes for years, sitting back in what intimacy is and whether or not we have it. The light that bounces off our eyes when Afrobeats is played <laughs> is a sign of intimacy. Whenever my mind wanders because of anxiety, you saying reassuring things is a sign of intimacy. All the bookstores and cinemas and public parks we occupy, how it turns out to always be an adventure is a sign of intimacy. When I'm with you, 10 hours feels like 10 minutes. I feel safe in your presence. We are non-judgmental with each other. We prefer each other's company, despite the noise of the world. When I'm with you, my stomach aches of scented laughter. I feel like quilt, I feel the quilted sugar in my blood broom wildly. I never feel like I'm invisible. I feel seen, felt, and loved. Every other Valentine's Day, I move earth at the center, meaning what is more important than spending time with you? on love day. Your love moves the strings of my instrument. The world always feels weird when we depart. What keeps me awake is all the kinds of wonders that await us. Thinking about soft golden sand by the ocean's edge. You and me with two little ones. <laughs> Love on a higher ground. Thank you. Have we got time for one more? Or yeah, one more. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we got. Well, I'll speak to that just guys, I wasn't even he actually he's actually like this all the time. Like this level of zen. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's got a common presence. It's for sure, like. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Grounding. Grounding. Yeah. So, grounding. Yeah. so basically, if you're a maniac, pair up with him. Honestly? Yeah. Like, <laughs> the last time I was out, I was on one. Yeah, because then he was just around you while you're just. Yeah. Like, literally, just with my green teeth, he was just grounding me. Like He's yeah. like, you're like, I'm losing my mind. He's like, it's a baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think of what should be the last poem. There's, there's a few I, I heard. I, I, oh, oh, we got a request. Okay. There's, there's a, uh, you got the if I was a prime minister or sunflowers. Please do it. Oh, that was too good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sunflowers. Yeah. sunflowers. Yeah. sunflowers. Yeah. sunflowers. Yeah. It's because you've already yeah. heard it before. Oh, ah, okay. So no, no, no. Do something new if you want. That's okay. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just... Oh, this one. Do what I want. I haven't heard. I haven't heard sunflowers. And Carla, Carla really loves you, so you know. And her happy. Carla said sunflowers. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if I've got, actually got it in here. Oh. Something similar. Something similar, okay. okay. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Not that one, not that one. <laughs> You're not going there today. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, this one is quite romantic. Romantic over here. Mm. Okay, let's go with this one. Okay. My grandfather wakes up in the middle of the night. A rush of air engulfs him, sweat pulsating upon his face. He heads down the squeaking stairs. The light pulling from outside is a Moroccan silhouette lamp. Opens the front door, journeys into the streets, encounters a group of men still up, rolling dices, laughing. I believe my Curiosities come from my grandfather. I question everything. I am a why not type of person. I live at the edges of things people don't say. Mm. From drinking a glass of lemonade, my head grows filled with ideas. One night, I receive a text from a friend who I've always wanted to fuck. 
of things people don't say from drinking a glass of lemonade my head grows filled with ideas one night i receive a text from a friend who i've always wanted to fuck but felt i would lose it all in my living room the velvet sofa converts into a bed i close my windows the wind wanders elsewhere my friend stays the night. That night, I sink into the gold warm bed sheets, pondering the sex. A sky burning of hidden pleasure, pondering the story of my grandfather. How unexpectedly meeting my grandmother at an Ivy Palm beach party, a lush, exotic 1950s Ugandan party. When I asked my grandfather how he felt when he met my grandmother, he told me, like the year had just begun. Suddenly, living had more meaning. Every Sunday, they would meet outside a close thriving fish market, go to a karaoke themed bar. My grandmother sang karaoke. One night, the car broke down and my grandfather had to change the car tire. I was told, Two women on the driveway offered to help, I'm not sure. The one thing I didn't know until recent was my grandfather bought roses from street corners. Roses from street corners. Even when it wasn't Valentine's Day. Perhaps my charm comes from him. Perhaps I'm a giver by nature. Perhaps I crave the feel of roses in my hands. After getting fired from a job selling newspapers, my grandmother wanted to get a tattoo inspired by the 1960s rock youth genre. Instead, she opted to smile, vibing to the city central music festival. Her most treasured possession was her smile. I believe my smiles come from my grandmother. People ask me if I'm okay and I always smile. A smile is a terrifying invention we have built as a society to mask the fact the world is burning. Mm. And so we are burning inside from the crackling chaos that eats us all. The things money can't buy, waking up to an echoing mountain breath of peace, the adrenaline rush of relief, the feel of a dazzling sunset upon the eye. A lunch break with your favourite person. Meeting your future self in a coffee shop. Figuring out who you are and what is your purpose. Things money can't buy. Grandparents who love you. I still remember how satisfying it was receiving a warm hug from my grandmother. Watching edible mangoes fall from the trees with my grandfather outside the open family veranda in Uganda. Nothing beats having family around you whilst riding in an ambulance, suffering all around, air anxious, mind racing. Nothing beats having family around you whilst performing a memorized poem at your first headline show. <laughs> Nothing beats having a family around you getting married again getting married again this time to the love of your life your very self Thank you. wow.